coming up on Design Science. Did you know that a successful kitchen design comes down to a simple shape and some creative measurements? Most people think interior design is all about picking out pretty things. Well, I have a little secret for you. At the heart of every fabulous home design is science. I'm Julie Couch, and I'm here to help you take out the guesswork using tried and true formulas. Together, we'll explore the theories that lead to guaranteed gorgeous interiors. This is Design Science. Kitchens can be a puzzle. There are so many shapes, sizes, and layouts. But the one thing every kitchen has in common, a little something called the kitchen work triangle. What exactly is the kitchen work triangle? It's a concept that creates functionality and efficiency and comes from a simple formula. Each side of the triangle should measure no less than four feet and no more than nine feet. And in an ideal world, the perimeter of the triangle should be no less than 13 feet and no more than 26 feet. Now that we're done with the math portion, let's take a look at some of my favorite kitchens and see how this all works out. Not only is this a beautiful kitchen, this is a perfect example of a family kitchen that works so well. So we have the sink, we have all the ways to prepare food behind you. So we have a microwave, a range, a double oven, and then across the room a bit, we have the fridge. So you have tons of room to get things out, prep them on the island, and then obviously prepare them. You really wanna think about how you're gonna move around the kitchen. We like to have four feet between your island and your working space or your cooking space. Sometimes a little bit more where your fridge is because you are gonna open and step back. So you really wanna make sure it functions well when you're using it, when your whole family's in the kitchen. So this is a family of four. We want it to be comfortable for everyone. When you are fortunate enough to have these big open spaces, especially here with this vaulted ceiling, we really wanna make sure the lights are large enough that they can handle the scale, they can handle the volume of this vault. And so we chose to do these really oversized glass pendants. They did need to be larger so they didn't feel too dainty, but we also let them be a little bit higher than what is typical. So these are hung at 42 inches from the island to the bottom of the fixture. That's a little bit higher than your standard 36 inches, only because this ceiling is so high and they are more grand in scale. So we didn't want them to feel too small. We wanted them to really balance out this gorgeous vaulted ceiling with this big island. A lot of our clients do love this light bright look, this marble look, but marble can be a little tricky to care for. It does have to be sealed. You can etch it a little bit. If it's honed, which means it doesn't have a polish on it, it's a little more forgiving. Polished marble is not forgiving. It can even have water spots that don't come out. Lemon juice will etch it. It's pretty easy to make it look worn. But if you are more of a person that likes a pristine surface that stays really perfect years and years, this is a quartz, which is one of my favorite materials. It is impossible to have bacteria on these. They're so easy to clean because they're not porous like a natural stone, which also makes it much more durable. If you're not in a price point that you can maybe do a quartz, you can do a granite product. It is pretty indestructible, though it is a natural stone, but that is definitely a great option, especially at a lower price point. So these are decisions you wanna make early on because you wanna pay attention to budget and function and not totally ignore how you really live every day in your kitchen. This is a great example of an island kitchen. Everything revolves around this giant island, but unlike some other kitchens, it's a really unusual 
triangle, if you will. The working triangle is extended in this situation because the fridge is actually across the room. It's a little bit further because our priority was to have almost seven feet of fridge and freezer. It's a large family, that was the most important thing. So we were really able to change this up a bit and still make it really functional for them, but accommodate all their needs. And then this wall is more your cooking wall. You've got kind of like range, double ovens, sink, and it really gets everything in one space. But the highlight of the kitchen is there is this massive island. They have four kids, there's plenty of seats, and obviously bold, big pendants because it is such a large space. And since you can see this island is very large, it's almost nine feet, we had to really be aware of that when we were thinking about cabinet height. The cabinets go all the way to the ceiling, they have some glass detail at the top, so they really balance it out. We could have a giant piece of furniture here, it accommodates all these bar stools, it works well, but if we didn't have these other large pieces around it, I think it would feel a bit out of place. With these elements, it feels perfect. Welcome to my kitchen. You can see by looking at this countertop, it is very well loved by our family. So my working triangle is very, I would say typical, more classic. I can basically reach the freezer, grab my frozen pizza, put it in the oven with this hand, wash my hands in the sink. When I was thinking about style for our kitchen, I definitely wanted this very dramatic black French range. This was kind of like star of the show, very glam. And so I kind of continued with that with the black cabinets because I think that's an instant way to create drama. And obviously the range hood, it's metal, it's painted, it's got this really cool brass detail on it. When using tile, you can see what I did here. I started this tile, which is a simple subway with texture. And instead of stopping that under the range hood or just behind the range, I continued it on the entire wall because I don't want the line where the tile stops to be the focal point. I want that tile just to be a beautiful layer and a backdrop for the star, which is the range and the range hood. So let's talk cabinets. That's probably the most expensive and most important part of any kitchen. So if you do a high gloss, it's gonna be much dressier, much more glam, much more formal. If you do more of a flat paint or satin paint, it's gonna be obviously more casual. You can see on our fridge, our door style. It's very common right now to do a shaker style. It's a great look, it's very simple. So what I wanted to do is take that style, but make the styles and rails a little smaller and add this tiny bit of beading. And it really just creates a shadow line. It's something very easy you can do but it really gives you tons and tons of options, not to mention your hardware. So with that combination of your door style, your paint finish, and your hardware, you can create endless, endless looks. Now that you've seen some of my favorite kitchens, I hope you'll be inspired to tackle your own space. See you next time on Design Science.